Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. I want to welcome you to our happy place. This is where every day we make dreams come true. Even when sometimes it seems like it's difficult, but we do make it come true. And we want to welcome you to our little place. We have four locations now, so it's getting a little bigger with your help. But uh, it is a very special day to celebrate with all of you. So welcome to Casa Ruby. This is everyone's place. And certainly, uh, it is a very special day as well, because for a second time this year, and we also have Mayor uh, Mariel here with us, and it's a very special uh, moment, because before she became mayor, she was already uh, working on our issues. So to have her here, uh, it, it's a very special moment. So here we have with us Mariel Bowser. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, good morning, everybody. I am uh, really happy to be here. I'm always happy to, to help distribute some checks. <laughs> and I know you, you are happy to hear that, too. And um, I am very uh, pleased also to be here with members of, of my team. Uh, and we have really especially been focused on ending homelessness in the District of Columbia. Have you heard about that? I hope you've heard about that because uh, we've definitely been talking about it. Uh, we're serious about it. We have put the force of our entire government behind it. And I'm also grateful to uh, my friends on the Council of the District of Columbia who have stepped up to the plate with us as well and helped fund the first down payment on ending homelessness uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, so today we're specifically focused on on youth homelessness and LGBT key, LBT, G, LGBTQ <laughs> youth homelessness. Um, and a reporter asked me a question on the, on the way up and he asked me if I was surprised by um, the predominance, uh, but surprised by the, the, the critical number of LGBTQ youth um, that make up the youth homelessness number. And I said, unfortunately, I am not, um, because we know that these young people face the most bullying and discrimination, um, assault, you name it. Um, and it's not just in the outside world, it's sometimes and unfortunately from their own family and neighbors and close associates. Um, so we know that these uh, youth uh, need our attention especially. Uh, I don't have to tell you the, the history because we have been focused on the youth homelessness issue for some time. Uh, and that's why I was supportive of the implementation of the End Youth Homelessness Amendment Act uh, when I was a member of the council. Uh, and it includes $1.3 million annually to support additional shelter and transitional housing um, beds, drop-in centers, street outreach, and um, very importantly, the youth, the youth census. DHS awarded grants in September of last year to create 20 new uh, transitional housing bids and six new crisis bids for young people ages 18 to 24. Casa Ruby, one of the grant recipients, will now be able to support six more crisis bids. Covenant House also received a grant for transitional housing bids and also opened new bids last November. Um, the completion of the youth census is also very important, not only to capture the numbers of homeless and precariously housed young people, People, but also their characteristics. For example, um, were they in foster care? Um, were they part of uh, the justice system? Uh, how do they identify? Um, and this census was completed over a, a nine-day period. I hope you'll recognize that uh, one hallmark of our administration uh, is to tell the truth. 
right? Uh, sometimes in government, we don't want to look at things because we don't want to know what the answer is. Uh, and we have to resist uh, that temptation, uh, even when it tells us that our problem is significant and may be more significant than we thought. Even if it tells us we got something wrong as a government, and we trust me, governments are going to get things wrong yeah. all the time. <laughs> so if you do, you got to say it and figure out uh, a way uh, to correct it. Um, but implementation of this act, I, I dare say, uh, is a is consensus around our city, among city leadership, uh, in the mayor's office, at the council, all over the government, uh, that this has to be a, a priority. I am uh, want to uh, acknowledge and thank members of my team who have been uh, working uh, with you um, and working on these issues. Uh, let me acknowledge the deputy mayor for health and human services, Brenda Donald, who is here. I also want to acknowledge our, our director of the Department of Human Services, whose job, uh, whose job is many, but she's really responsible um, in a lot of ways for helping DC residents getting uh, get on the pathway to the middle class and uh, and and homelessness and ending homelessness is a key part of her charge. Uh, DHS Director Laura Zeilinger. <laughs> Uh, I also want to uh, recognize the Deputy Director for our Office of LGBTQ Affairs, Terrence Laney, who is representing Sheila Alexander-Reed. Um, and Sheila is uh, recuperating, I think. No, she's, in she's in surgery. Oh, today? Oh, yikes. Okay, so we want to keep her uh, in our prayers and uh, hope that she gets back to us real soon. But I want to thank Terrence. She left a very able leader in charge of the office, and we're going to count on him uh, to, to follow. Um, to follow our vision for getting these things done. Uh, so you will find, if you haven't got a copy of, of our handout, uh, it summarizes our homeless youth census of 2015 um, and kind of sets the, the, the pathway for what we need to focus on in the coming, uh, in the coming months and years. Uh, so a good part, I started out with the good news. Uh, and the good news is that we have not only the taxpayers who have been willing to step up, um, but we ha also have our private sector partners uh, and friends, uh, and specifically today, our friends at Verizon. So let's hear from Mario Acosta Velez. Give him a big round of applause. Uh, Verizon made a good choice when um, they uh, picked Mario to, to manage a lot of relationships in Washington, D.C., uh, and you can tell it's not a job for him but a passion for how he can marry corporate citizenship uh, with the things that we need to do uh, in our city. And I am just really um, proud to call Mario uh, a friend, and I would like to now recognize him for remarks. Oh, we're going to go to Laura. Okay. Laura. <laughs> Mayor, thank you very much. And I'll be brief. Thank you. Um, and Ruby, thank you so much for all that you do and for having us um, here in this wonderful facility this morning. Um, as the mayor mentioned, there are far too many young people experiencing homelessness. And I want to acknowledge and thank our mayor for her commitment to ending homelessness for all men, women, and children in the District of Columbia. We know that the solution to homelessness is housing, and the mayor's budget includes historic investments and permanent supportive housing, rapid rehousing, targeted affordable housing, and $100 million for producing and preserving affordable housing through the Housing Production Trust Fund. And this is a commitment not just for one year, but for every year um, of the administration, because we have a lot of work to catch up on. Uh, we know that. For homelessness, generally, the driving cause of is lack of access to housing because of the huge need for affordability. So those investments, I think they deserve applause. That is a huge investment, and I just um, then want to acknowledge. And we know that, uh, but this is not something that government can do alone. And the private sector, the ways that the private sector can fill in in ways to help us meet the need is so important. And we also know when we talk about youth homelessness that youth are not many adults um, and we need to have programs that are designed to respond to their specific needs to, to that can understand and assess the protect, protective and risk factors that are going on and that can support them 
on a successful pathway forward, however they are coming to us. And that is why these investments in this speci these specific programs are absolutely so important. And there is not really anyone I know who's more competent to really look across and see how those programs need to work and to have them work well together and lead that strategic direction than um, a member of, very hardworking member of my team who's here with us today, um, Hillary Karens. And so she's working uh, very hard to transform our system. <laughs> Hillary is doing the very important work of taking what is a lot of different programs that we have and actually helping us operate as a system, which is how we will administer a much more effective response to the issue of youth homelessness. Uh, the, as part of the strategy, district is investing not only $23 million in that down payment of the implementation of Homeward DCR strategic plan, but over $5 million every year to bring solutions to youth homelessness to scale. And that's sort of the starting point based on what we've learned in our census. So you have some of the data points in front of you. Um, we did do this f um, first robust uh, homeless youth census over the course of um, a period of days to supplement what we do during our point in time count because we know often the issue of youth homelessness is something that is not visible to us. The way that young people experience homelessness is often different than adults. For, for various reasons they are not, they are, we are just not seeing them in the same places and if we, it is very difficult to try to solve a problem you cannot see and so being able to take the time over the course of days and understand who is precariously housed, who is doubling themselves up in a situation that is potentially unsafe because they can't access any other services, who is staying in an unsheltered situation or um, in our shelter system or in our adult programs is, is very important to making sure that we are designing the programs and services in a going forward way that will allow us to effectively achieve that end to youth homelessness. So we did find in our census that there were 318 young people age 24 and younger experiencing homelessness and of those 67 were unsheltered. This was in August. Um, almost 41 percent or so were in our um, were in our shelter transitional housing beds in the adult system. So if we know that youth have specific needs because they are youth um, and that the adult system may not be the best place to provide those services, but we need to be able to meet them where they are and make sure that we are extending services to them in appropriate ways so that presents a very important and strategic opportunity for us to understand in our data. We know that unemployment is a, is a significant issue among all youth and youth especially who are experiencing homelessness, 70% of the young people in shelter are unemployed and of the young people who we um, talked to who were ex ex in a um, precariously housed or an insecure housing situation, 82% of them were unemployed. And so, and finally, the reason that we're here today is that we know that 43% of our young people experiencing homelessness identified themselves as LGBTQ. Um, so while these results may seem overwhelming, we, as I said before, this accurate, having more accurate data helps us do what we need to do to get really a handle on what it means to solve it. And with the leadership that we have with the private sector partnerships, with the partnerships with great organizations in our community who really know how to effectively and competently reach people where they are at, um, I could not be more hopeful for the work that we will achieve together in a going forward way. Um, so again, with um, I want to thank everybody. Um, we have a lot of important and strategic work to do and the right um, energy and collaboration to get it done. So with that, I want to invite our Deputy Director for LGBTQ Youth Affairs, Mr. Terrence Lancy, to the podium. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to thank the Mayor Again, I'm so proud to be a part of her team. She set a big vision for our city uh, last year and charged our office to make sure that we work to make sure that all LGBTQ people are included in that. And one of the first big visions was ending homelessness. And uh, both Director Reed and myself and our uh, housing specialist, Darrell Gaston, have been working hard to make sure that everybody in the community understands that they are a part of the mayor's vision to end homelessness. Uh, and I definitely want to give a big thank you to Darrell uh, because they were talking 
as we're talking about this survey um, that we did uh, last fall to count homeless youth, Darrell was out on the street at 2 a.m. He was in Chinatown. He was down in places where the youth are. He didn't have to do that. His commitment to this work was that strong, um, and that's the vision that the mayor has set for our office and our team, and that's what we try to live up to every day. So both thank you to the mayor as well as to Darrell for all the work that, that, that you have done um, to get us to this day. Um, last year, we had a big year for the LGBT community. Uh, we got marriage equality, um, and it troubled us because on that very day, we knew that 40% of homeless youth in this country were LGBT. We knew that the night that the White House was lit up in rainbow uh, lights, that kids were sleeping in Chinatown, that kids were sleeping in DuPont Circle and in front of metro stations. And so uh, we knew that the work went beyond that. And so uh, part of the, the work was making sure that we knew accurate numbers for DC. We've done that. And then also supporting uh, uh, those like Casa Ruby, like Wanda Austin uh, House, like Smile, like Hips got the support that they needed uh, to serve those youth. And so that's what brings us here today. Um, we knew that that work continues on and that Casa Ruby and Wanda Austin and all these great service providers uh, were worried that we would, we would end that work. I've heard you say that several times, Ruby, <laughs> that we would, get our, we would get our wedding rings and our marriage licenses and go home. So <laughs> I, hope, I, hope that, I hope that you see that we're committed today. Uh, we're also very, very thankful for uh, Verizon. Um, Marco Acosta Velez is here today to announce an incredible partnership um, between DC government and the Verizon to support uh, these service providers. Uh, and so uh, I want to let everyone know that uh, all these service providers that I listed will receive $5,000, up to about $5,000, is that correct, uh, to do incredible programming. Uh, Smile is going to use the money to do Connect for Life. I'm sure you're going to talk a little bit about that. Wanda Austin is going to continue to participate in that program and lift up um, the work that they're doing by um, increasing your staff's capacity to raise money. Um, and so I hope that as you see this government and private partnership come together, that you all reach into your pockets and support the work that all these service providers are doing as well as community members. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce the, the um, State Government Affairs Director for Verizon, uh, who is going to let you all know about the work that Verizon is doing to support uh, our service providers here in DC as well. Yep. Thank you uh, very much. Um, and buenos dias. Uh, first of all, uh, Mayor uh, Bowser, thank you so much for, in for inviting uh, Verizon to be a part of this uh, important announcement and, and to be able to share with you some great news about how Verizon is supporting uh, not only the LGBT community in general, but uh, in critical services for LGBT youth. And I am really pleased to uh, be able to be here today and support this amazing initiative through the Office of LGBT Affairs and join many, many community leaders that I have the privilege to work with for many, many years. And I have known Ruby Corrado for more than 10 years now. Um, and I've seen how, not only how you have grown as a leader, individually, but how you have brought together so many great resources for the community, and I want to congratulate you uh, for that as well. Um, for many years, uh, Verizon has been able to support many important programs in the community uh, in the areas of education, healthcare, uh, domestic violence prevention, and economic development, and we continue to be committed to having a positive and visible presence here in the Washington DC area, but especially in the diverse communities that we serve every day. And in an effort to raise awareness about the importance of bringing these critical services to LGBTQ youth, uh, we are proud to announce uh, today that we are uh, awarding uh, $45,000 in foundation grants to the Wanda Alston House and to smile, to support, <laughs> to support their efforts uh, to increase access to critical services for LGBTQ uh, youth in the district. So let me tell you a little bit about this amazing partnership. Uh, many of you know and agree with me that they are vital organizations, along the other ones that are part of this initiative. 
because of the uh, needed services that they bring to, to the community. With Wanda Alston House, um, our partnership is going to support uh, providing medical care services, mental health providers, domestic violence support services, which is so critical uh, in our community, and overall support services for uh, LGBTQ youth who are experiencing uh, homelessness issues in the district. We smile, uh, one of our long-term partners here in the district. Uh, we are supporting this amazing program uh, that helps to build healthy relationships among LGBTQ, especially those who have experienced issues of, uh, around domestic violence in, in their relationships or, or their homes. And we hope that through this program, we not only increase their understanding on how to find uh, safe uh, places and, and experiences, but also to become advocates yeah. in the community to help other young people to uh, prevent domestic violence issues in our community, work with their peers and also work with community leaders to address these issues. And I'm really, really excited to see how these two programs will be implemented this year and, and to be a part of it. Um, now, um, I'd like to not only congratulate you, but ask you to uh, join me here in front of the, uh, at the podium for a very special uh, presentation for you. And first for uh, Sota, who is uh, a donation for, for a smile. Thank you, everyone, and I look forward to being a part of this initiative and supporting uh, the mayor in your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Maria. Uh, we couldn't be happier to have a, a partner like you here in D.C., especially for these two really important programs. Uh, so, Tom, would you like to go first? Okay. So my name is Sultan Shacker, and I'm the executive director of SMILE. Um, as many of you know, SMILE has been around for over 30 years, working to support lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youth in, in the district. And it's a privilege to every day go to work and be able to provide life-changing programs, but it's also a responsibility and a challenge. And that responsibility and the challenge is really about making sure that we're supporting the youth who are the most vulnerable here in the district. And just a couple of weeks ago, I got a letter from one of our youth. And he was telling me about how he heard about Smile on a Tuesday, came over to the youth center on a Wednesday, and had we not been open, he probably wouldn't be here today because of what he was going through in his life. And so that's why I'm incredibly appreciative of the mayor of Verizon for not only helping us provide life-changing programs, but helping us provide life-saving programs. And one of those programs, as Terrence mentioned, is the Connect for Life program. And what that program really is about is about looking at ways that we can really provide resources and access to resources that really change the trajectory of a young person's life. And that program is 100% dedicated to looking at what resources homeless LGBTQ youth need to access the services that are going to um, improve their life. And so what we provide right now is a cell phone. And a lot of people think, oh, a cell phone? Like, what is that? But that's because most of us have the privilege of owning a cell phone. We pull it out of our pocket, we look up directions. We pull it out of our pocket, we order an Uber, and it takes us somewhere. We pull it out of our pocket when a friend calls us in a crisis. But for somebody who constantly lives in crisis, that cell phone becomes an anchor. And so thanks to the partnership of a number of organizations here um, in the room today, we've been able to provide those cell phones and provide a pilot program for the city to really look at how we can provide technology that's really going to change where a young person is in their life and the challenges they have and provide them with resources to move their life forward. And that work would not be possible without the mayor, without Verizon, and without a lot of the community partners we have here today, like HIPS, like the DC Center, and like Casa Ruby. So on behalf of SMILE, the youth that we work with and the board, I just want to thank everybody for, for your support. Thank you. And Ken, would you like to come up uh, and talk about the work at Wanda Alston? 
Um, I, uh, good morning. I was hoping Sultanas would be longer. That would take me <laughs> a little longer. Uh, good morning. I am, I am the uh, Ken Pettigrew, the director uh, of the Wanda Austin Foundation. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today. Thank you to the mayor, to the mayor's staff. Um, the Office of LGBT Affairs uh, have been absolutely incredible and supportive to Verizon, who, um, who support floors me to this day. Um, I have this. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to say this. Um, we often get together and we talk about what we don't have, but in this room, what we have is resources. And oftentimes we say, we don't have this, we don't have this, but here are solutions in the room with Verizon, with the office, um, with the grant for the mini grant that we're getting from the Office of LGBT Affairs. This is what we get to celebrate. And this is what we get to go back and tell folks. There are people who are interested in you. There are people who care about you. For our Wanda Austin, resident, we get to tell them there are, there's support out there that says you can go to Morgan State and get straight A's. That's just not a vision, that is a reality. And that's reality and a vision that collaborations and resources like this get to do. Um, I'm such a crybaby and I, I cry here, I cry at the house, I cry when youth come, I cry when they go. And I'm shaking up here only because I think it is so important that we stress these collaborations, they are so important to the work. Smiley and I, we talk, uh, Sultana and I talk every day. It's about the work that leads to ending homelessness in Washington, D.C. I want to thank you and everybody in the room for your commitment. Thank you, Ruby, for inviting us here. This is the most inviting person I've ever met. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for what you do at Smile and again, Verizon. Thank you so much, so much again. Thank you. And keep these collaborations. I will say this. One of the things I do, I do think it's important that when we tell people we're collaborating, we have to tell other people to do it too. What happens is when we get in spaces like this and someone finds out Wanda Austin got a $20,000 check, they slow down. That's, it should be the opposite. We should be encouraging people to build on these foundations. This is a foundation to build on. So when you go and tell somebody Wanda Austin got $20,000, then you say, where's yours? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you everybody again for coming today. Uh, I'm gonna throw it back over to Ruby to close out. But again, I just wanna thank both Verizon. Thank you for Wanda Austin for doing the work you're doing. Thank you for Smile. I'm really lucky to call both you and Sultan friends, Ken, uh, and continue to work with David uh, at the DC Center for the work that they're doing on this issue. Continue to work with Ruby. It's always a pleasure to work with Ruby, right? <laughs> You learned so much in just a few minutes. Um, and then also, I want to um, take a one quick second, if that's OK, to welcome a new member of our team. You'll, you all know her very, very well. Uh, Leandria Gillum is joining our office next week. Leandria has been a longtime activist in our community. She'll continue to, to inform the work that we do in our office and continue to be a voice for so many folks in our community already. Uh, she's been in our office, opening our eyes up to new opportunities and just really getting us re-enthused and to go into the second year of our fresh start with the mayor. Um, so welcome Leandria, reach out to her, support her as she um, comes onto our staff. And again, Ruby, throw it over to you. But I, I want to oh, introduce Ruby. <laughs> I want to introduce Ruby. And so I, I'm just really, uh, again, uh, happy to call uh, Ruby a friend. And I'm just most grateful because all good friends are candid and truthful and hold you accountable. And she really went out of her way uh, to introduce everything that Casa Ruby does to me as a council member, as a candidate, uh, and now as mayor. Uh, and what we promised each other that we would talk regularly, we wouldn't assume that the other knows what the other is thinking, that we would stay focused on jobs and housing and how we could truly be a, a government um, that treats everybody equally and fairly and provide an opportunity. Our administration, and like you heard the president say last night, is about making sure everybody has a fair shot. And what I loved about what he said was he talked about the new American economy, uh, which so reflects what's happening in, in our city as well. And the government has to be a part of making sure that everybody can 
can adjust to the new American uh, economy. And Casa Ruby is going to be so important to that. Uh, Ruby doesn't uh, want to, she doesn't want the easy work. This is what I loved about what she told. I'm not going to tell you exactly what she said, uh, but she told me she's not interested in the easy work. Somebody else can do the easy work, the tough work, the people that need the most help, the people who have gone off and, and fallen off and come back. Those are the people uh, that she wants to help. Uh, and I know uh, that when she has that platform, she also has the responsibility of training other people and reaching out to make sure other people can do the tough work too. So that's why I'm happy to be here at Casa Ruby and introduce Casa Ruby's leader, no. Ruby Corrado. <laughs> this was not in the program, right? To, to, to make me feel mellow before I speak. Um, it's actually between the youth that are here um, in the front and the commitment the mayor made before she became mayor, before she was in the campaign, and how welcoming she was all these years um, that I could actually walk in and vent back in those days. And now I can actually do more than vent. I can actually report. Thank you. Because that's, it's, it's a big thing. Um, homelessness and disparities in the LGBT community, in the community in general, are very dear to my, to my heart. Because I did come to Washington when I was 16 and I was homeless. And through my lifetime, I have fallen homeless, not because I didn't want to provide for myself, because I didn't want to work and support myself, but because of discrimination for being transgender. I arrived as a young feminine boy, and at that point I could have a job, but when I transitioned in 1992, all of the doors were closed to me. I applied for more than a thousand jobs, and went into interviews and never got one single job. I eventually volunteered at Wedman Walker and they actually led me to where I am today, so I want to acknowledge that. But through all these years, it's about telling our stories. And I am in the room with a lot of people who have been with me for so many years. Many people who believed in me, but more importantly, they believe that this community, the most vulnerable, deserve a chance. So I want to thank all of you because you didn't just give me a chance, you gave all of us a chance. Today I actually can go to the White House to talk about our work, to actually go pick up tickets at the mayor's office and checks sometimes. <laughs> yes, but I can do that because I was given an opportunity. And I think about what that opportunity has done for me. There's a memory that I will never forget. For um, The National AIDS Conference came to Washington this year. And as we were prepared to represent our city well, I drove by the center and there were four kids sleeping outside our front door. Now, this is in addition to the other uh, 12 that are living in one of our transitional homes. And I just kept wondering, what is that white sheet? And I got scared because when you see white sheets, it's because something happened, right? A crime scene. And I went in and I lifted those sheets and there were four faces that I will never forget. And I basically got my commitment to be more enduring. Those four young people are now living in our new shelter that we just opened. Uh, a little bit over two months ago, with the support of the amazing people at DHS. I want to thank you. <laughs> Prior to that, you visited us several times, and I never wondered why you were coming, right? <laughs> I should have known. And uh, you got to see firsthand what it actually happens here at Casa Ruby. And the day that we opened, uh, you know, some of the staff came in for the summer. Uh, Dor Doris, where are you? You got to see firsthand what life is here at Casa Ruby, right? And I want to thank you because not many people get to see, you know, the change that is taking place. So I just want to just uh, leave you thinking. 
we did share some data today. Um, more needs to be done. We are doing something, and I think it is, it, it is very important. And as I talk to my youth a lot, we are actually taking care of them, but there's many more out. There are many more youth that tonight will not have a place to live. We manage, with the support of the city, to provide housing for 17 of them. Through our partnerships with our donors and individual and grassroots efforts, we open our hypothermia uh, beds this year in November, when the first uh, day that got cold. And as a result of that, uh, we are in conversations with DHS, and they looked at the work that we were doing um, because we are providing 16 more beds. Right here in this room, eight people sleep every night. There are cots in the back, and when 7 o'clock comes in, we all come prepared, and we set the, the beds, and we make sure we are prepared for them. But I also want to thank Hillary, because as I was talking to her, it was not in the plans that, you know, that Casa Ruby will be uh, getting money to provide services for hypothermia, and she said, Ruby, let me see what I can do. She didn't promise, but she came back and said, we're going to help you with the work that you're doing in hypothermia. So thank you for adding 16 more beds. Today is 36 beds, 36 people that do not have to fear dying in the cold. Thank you so much, let's get to work.